So here we are on Logic Pro. So what, what you want to do is you want to load the instrument track, that sampler instrument, to this track. And if you don't know how to load a track when you first load up Logic Pro, it's going to ask you if you want a software instrument, audio instrument, or something like that. But if you want to learn, if you want to know how to insert another track, you can hit this plus button here. And then this will bring up this menu. You hit software instrument. You can choose how many tracks you want to open to create and it'll populate two tracks, all right? You can just press delete if you want to delete them. You have to leave a track open in order for the project to stay open. So what you want to do is go into the inspector over here and we want to select the sampler. And it's gonna be the quick sampler. And mono stereo, I would select mono. So here's your sampler right here. You could drag and drop loops into here. You have your LFO section. You have two LFOs and then you have your modular matrix. You have your pitch where you can pitch the sample down, pitch the sample up, fine tune it, glide the pitch. You could add another filter where it will low pass band pass or have a high pass filter you could change the you could add a little amp to it you could pan increase the volume change the polyphony when you load a sample you usually want to have it on mono so that way it can only play one voice at a time these down here are your envelopes this is your pitch envelope your filter envelope and your amp envelope this is your adsr your attack delay sustain release how long how quickly you want the sound to come on or go off and how long you want it to last and when do you want it to cut off so let's import a sample from the Apple Loops. Let's find let's find a groovy sample. Okay, so this sample right here sound like uh, we could do something with it. So all we got to do is drag this sample in. So boom, we got that. It'll automatically chop it up. But what we want to do is we want to understand what, what this sampler is, right? So in this sampler, we have classic, one shot, slice, and recorder. Here you can record your, your own instruments if you want to, your voice, you clap your hands for some claps, uh, your own snares, drum kiss, things like that. Slice here, you have the mode where you can slice about transient, you can slice about beat divisions, you can slice about equal division, or you could do a manual slice. What I like to do is the slice about beat divisions and here you see it's in one eighth chop so if you play your notes out on the keyboard you see the little short stabby notes so what we want to do is we could adjust that to 116 316 we can go all the way down to just one note but let's do something evenly and these will be my chops my three chops so you'll go you understand so now you got your chops. What you could do with your chops here is you can mess with the LFO rate if you want to. You could pitch it up and down if you want to. You could add more filter. You could low, add a low pass filter, add a band pass, add a high pass, or some other type of filter. There's two different options here. So when you load a sample right here in your amp envelope, you'll you have 16 polyphonies. Now what this means is that every time you press the note, each one of these notes is gonna play 16 voices. It's gonna sound like a whole mess of problems. So what you wanna do is just put it on mono so that way when you hit the note and then hit the next note, each note individually plays by themselves. So down here are your envelopes. This is your pitch envelope, your filter envelope, and also your amp envelope where you can shape the sound even more. You have your attack delay, sustain release where you could adjust these knobs here to uh, tweak the sound uh, your attack is as how soon do you want the sound to come in release is how late do you want the sound to go off so play around with it and you can figure it out what you want to do so let's just go down a bit and see what this sound like it's fire they also have something else right so when we in slice you have chromatic, white, or black, right? So if you want to play all the notes, if you don't want to go through from white to black, you put them all on the white keys, or you can put them all on the black keys, with whichever one is more comfortable for you. You have your gate. It works to eliminate the sound below a given threshold in a recording. So if you have your threshold set at, let's say, 
negative three dBs, the gate will then close at that point to not let no frequencies above that that threshold that you had set. Play to the end means once I hit the note once, it'll play to the end. If you don't have it that way, once you release the note, it'll stop playing. You have your tempo, your follow tempo button here. And you could adjust the speed if you want it to go slower or faster within the beat. Being that we have this sample. Okay, next we have one shot. One shot uh, is exactly what it is. You you hit the you hit your uh, your key, and it'll play the one shot. Each 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 key you press will it will try to replicate that key, but it'll play that whole sample in different octaves. In classic, in classic is just a normal view. If you want to sit here and play around with the uh, effects inside classic, you could loop it, you could forward the loop, you could reverse the loop, things like that. But I like to use slice. When we slice up the sample, it gives us the notes that it's actually on. So the notes is C1, D1, E1, because I have my chromatic keys all on white. So here we go. So that sounds like if I had to pick a BPM, which I like anywhere between 75 and 85, I would say that's around, let's try 80. Let's change that to an 80 BPM, right? And let's let's load up a drum kick, right? Or a drum loop. And what I like to do is when I make when I make beats, I usually save my beats that I make, the drum kits, the the drums, the samples, the snares, the hi-hats, all of those particular instruments, I like to just save them as an Apple loop. If you want to know how to save your loops as an Apple loop, let me know in the comments and I'll create a video for you. So here we go right here. We got, we're not doing trap. I like to do more boom bap type beats. If you want to see me make a trap beat, you know, just let me know. I'll get it done for you. So what we have here, I like, uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to drag this in. Let's import the tempo, 73. All right, so let's let's rock with 73 then. Snares. If you want these drum sounds, man, let me know in the comments, man. I create a free drum kit for you. So let's see what we got going on here. What I want to do now is I want to cycle. I want to cycle loop this. And how you do that, you could either press C to cycle right click and auto select the selectors meaning that if you have any one of these tracks selected it's going to auto select the region for that track so if you have multiple tracks it's going to auto select all of those tracks within that track that's highlighted what i like to do is auto select it so that way i can get the measure the, so that way i can get the regions i want and then i turn it off so now that we have that loop we play the loop back and let's see what we get we come up with So let's check the MIDI notes to make sure that we have our timing correct. So what we want to do here is bring this back up. We want to move this note a little bit closer. Let's bring this back and move this right over here. That could bounce right there. You can have everything to the grid or you can move it off the grid. Once you really start orchestrating the beat, then you could actually put these notes, slide them a little bit to give it a little bit more groove and things of that nature. That's what I do when I start completing the beat. But right now, I just want it to be on time. So let's let, let's take a listen. So now in the sampler, let's say if we wanted to pitch it up a little higher, change the tempo of the beat. You gotta, you gotta transpose your drums to make it match. That sounds crazy. All right, let's go. Let's go back to where that was. Yeah, from there, you'll 
line it up, put some variations to it, find maybe some more sounds, filter it out, EQ it, process it, add another bass line, you know, beef up the drums and kicks and snares, add some more ear candy variations, and then now you got yourself a complete beat. So I hope that gave you an idea how to use the sampler in Logic Pro. If you have any questions about Logic or anything inside of Logic, let me know in the comments. I'm here to help you out. My name is Taurus the General. Thank you for joining me on Time Serve Records. Peace.